Welcome to lesson 5.3, the means to explore. How did the exchange of knowledge and technology make European exploration possible? We're going to find out the different types of navigational techniques that explorers use and all that kind of stuff to reach new and far distant lands. So stick around and let's learn something. Lesson 5.3, welcome back. How did the exchange of knowledge and technology make European exploration possible? In the last lesson, we were talking about why the desire to explore existed. And today we're going to talk about the means to explore. Um, so like think about a project, let's say we're talking about means to explore. Think about a project that you recently uh, completed. The equipment, the money, the time, the skills those are the means to complete that project. So this is talking about the means to explore. So what do we need to explore? And why? What's the purpose of exploring? Why are we wanting to explore? Well, we knew that. And now we're going to be switching gears a little bit. I have a map here. This is all the various trade routes that existed uh, during our uh, story our world history story here. And one of the reasons, one of the kind of things that Europeans were wanting to do is they wanted to expand what they knew of the world. So they knew of Europe, they knew of Asia, they knew of Africa, right? But they weren't experts in these areas. So they were always, Europeans that is, they were always interested in other places and other times. It's no different than some of the books that we read or the movies that we watch. We want to escape and we want to be able to do and uh, learn about different places. And for the Europeans, um, that was the classics and as well, the Muslims. And the Europeans were part of a vast trade network. You can see it here on the map. I talked about already, it's Africa and it's Asia and these goods and these ideas uh, uh, on the slides here is goods and knowledge had a huge effect on the Europeans, okay? So uh, this was super important to them. And the Europeans, well, they were open and curious as to what else existed in the world. And this became a part of their worldview. They knew Europe really well. They knew Africa and Asia somewhat, but not as good as they knew Europe. So they wanted to be able to learn more about Africa and learn more about Asia. In the beginning lesson that we had here as part of the class, we took, we took a look at space exploration. And um, some of you mentioned the exploration of the oceans and the seas and stuff like that. Those are our current fascinations. We're interested in the, in the oceans. We're interested in space. Back then, they were interested in Africa and they were interested in Asia. And guys like Marco Polo and the Polo brothers, um, those travel accounts that they wrote about, those are super popular. Problem was, they were also inaccurate because we also enjoy, as much as we enjoy our fascination with the unknown, we are also interested in a uh, in a good, entertaining story. And there's a map here. This is a map of the world from 1503. We see Europe, we see Africa, we've got Asia on there, and we also have parts of North and South America because of what Columbus was doing in 1492 and the explorers after him. So we've got this map. It's nowhere near an accurate map, right? It's not the satellite imagery that we have today, but it is a map nonetheless. This is a map from 1482. This was, this was years before that first map that I showed you. We've got Europe here and Africa and Asia, but this is nowhere near anything like that of uh, that first map that we have. So our technology is ever increasing and improving and, and gaining us a lot of knowledge. How do we go about doing this? Well, technology changes and you saw with those two maps how it changes. 
There's a man here, this is Prince Henry of Portugal. His nickname is Prince Henry the Navigator. And he's totally into expeditions and ex exploration as well. And he's a prince, so he's got money. So he financed a lot of expeditions. And he established a school where cartographers, mathematicians, astronomers, sailors, and navigators, they could come together and they could share their knowledge and teach new explorers how to handle these new tools and technologies and ideas and all that kind of stuff so that they can help navigate the world. So he he did all this, he financed all this, and all of these people from around the known world were coming to this uh, center that he established to learn about the different tools that are out there. So what were the tools that were available to people back then? Well, the compass, this was available for them. Uh, to them, I should say. And this was used for finding the direction a ship is traveling in. And if you're in outdoor ed or if you've ever uh, picked up a compass before, your phones have them built in. Uh, it, you know, it tells you the direction that you're going in. It's not known for sure, but uh, it's believed that this was developed in China about 1700 years ago. And it wasn't the Europeans who were first to use this, but it was the Muslim travelers who were the first to use the compass. Astrolabe is the next one that would have been taught in Prince Henry, the navigator's school of navigation. By the way, that wasn't the name. I just made up it. I just made it up just now. But the astrolabe used the North Star or the sun to calculate the latitude. That's the latitude of a person or a ship. And that is the distance north or south of the equator. Okay, we're not going to get into all the sciencey stuff, but you should know where the equator is. It's not known for sure, but probably it was invented by the ancient Greeks and then further, uh, further on in its history, developed by the Arab mathematicians and astronomers. So they took the idea from the Greeks and then they further developed it into a more usable technology. The cross staff is next. This is used to measure the altitude of the pole star above the horizon to determine one's latitude, okay? Latitude, as you can see, is, is going to be really, really important. So th the astrolabe first is calculating latitude. Now we have this one to calculate latitude as well. Probably invented around the mid 1300s for astronomical purposes. And then in the 1500s, they start using this for navigation. This then gets further improved. The cross staff gets further improved to the back staff. And again, we're talking about latitude. And this was from the late 1500s to improve the use of the cross staff. And if you remember from grade seven social studies, many of the explorers that we learned about in grade seven, they've got these images of all of these tools as part of their profile pictures. So um, these are very important technologies for us to be able to use. Now, when you think of exploration back then, we often talk about the ship of Christopher Columbus, the three ships, but we always talk about that Santa Maria ship because that's the one that we can actually physically go and see at West Edmonton Mall. It's there in person. Some of you even had maybe a birthday party on there, but that's a replica of his ship. That was a, a technological advancement as well, okay, those ships. Take a look at some of these ships over the course of the last few centuries, the improvements that ships made over time too. So the starting off as a canoe and then fast forwarding to the Santa Maria ship that you see uh, at West Edmonton Mall, these ships that Santa Maria ship is crossing the ocean and that's that's not an easy thing to do. So the next time you're there, uh, the ship on the right hand side here is similar to that of the Santa Maria. Imagine spending two months on that ship. No electricity, no running water, no refrigeration or anything like that. And you can appreciate the difficult time that those early explorers had as they were crossing the oceans. All right, I want you to head over to your notebook and complete the questions for this part of the chapter.